Good morning and welcome to Budget Model Railways. So obviously these, this story has been on a lot of websites and all of the news, so it only seems right that we put our perspective on it, uh, coming as we do from a different place. Uh, what I will say is I've looked at quite a bit. Um, I'm going to rattle through quite a few things, but I'm going to try and keep it short, sharp and to the point, because some of the videos have gone on a bit. Um, so please stay with us for the ride. Uh, equally, if you're going to comment, please watch the video till the end because I might well cover some of the points that uh, that you want covered. So everybody knows the news and everybody's jumped to lots of conclusions as far as I can see. In my view, they are just that. And they're jumping to conclusions. There's no suggestion in my view that the hobby is necessarily dying. It is changing. Yes, if, and I don't want to offend anybody, but you're boring Bob and you belong to the Rivet Counters Model Railway Club, yeah, your hobby is in decline. That's because, and we've been saying this for a number of years, the hobby is too expensive and too elitist. Now, what's really interesting is watching some of the bigger mainstream channels suddenly saying, Model Railways are too expensive. We've got to have a budget range. We must keep this simple. We must make railways cheaper and easier. We must make it more inclusive. Guys, we've been saying that since the start of Budget Model Railways. But it is interesting to see, thank you, that everybody is finally catching up with us. The hobby is being dominated by the ultra, I don't care if it, how much it costs, so long as it's perfect. And that's the route the hobby's gone down. And that's where the problem is coming from. When you have people saying in a magazine editorial only a couple of years ago, that model railways is largely about nostalgia for steam, that means you're limiting your interest to anybody over 70. Even those that are interested in, say, blue diesels will be in their 60s. The trouble is that the hobby lives in a bubble. And if you don't look at magazines or you don't follow the I must have everything perfect money, nobody thinks you exist. So yes, I'm sure the magazines and so on and the mainstream and Hornby are all struggling. But look away from that. Look at what we do. Look at social media. A little bit of wobbly camera work there. So our channel is gaining two to three hundred subscribers a month. I doubt that some of the magazines are doing that. So it's simply that the hobby is changing. Let's get a little bit more specific. Hattons. Big shock. Well, yes and no. Um, Debenhams have shut down. Many high street shops have shut down. The high street in general is in decline. I should say here that I've been in retail for 20 years and I was then selling into retail for another 20 years. So I've quite a bit of experience. And I can tell you now that when any retailer, especially a big one goes, you're not going to get all the story. It will be more complicated than anybody is letting on. So whilst it's easy to say it's demographics and the hobby is shrinking, that's an easy way of saying there might be other issues. And I've already had people in the trade confirm to me that there are other issues. Now, not in this case, but in my experience, I know of one hobby trade where a large retailer went, citing all sorts of major issues with the industry. The reality is they wanted to sell it and couldn't. The reality is that they ran their business badly. Now, I'm not in any way suggesting that's Hatton's, but Hatton's will have had a complicated reason to go, not necessarily just the one that we've all seen in the media. Worley. Right. Worley is being hit by something that's affecting all sorts of hobbies, not just model railways. And although in this case it's possible to say it might be demographics, an, an ageing uh, group of people. The reality is, the reality is that anything that relies on um, volunteers is struggling. I'm a senior youth worker. Um, I've been involved in youth work and volunteering for 24 years. Um, I work with large amounts of volunteer organisations. And we are all struggling for volunteers. That's just the things like cost of living crisis, much, big, much bigger family commitments now, and much bigger financial commitments, leaving less time for volunteering. More specifically, and I do know this was the case with Worley and a couple of shows, 
Warley are probably not short of members. What they're short of is members who want to do anything. And this is where we struggle in the youth organisations I'm familiar with. I have oodles of volunteers. But as soon as I say to any of them, can you take a responsible role? Can you take an organisational leadership management role? Nobody wants to know. They are too busy. And a great many of them are scared off by the huge amount of admin and due process, oversight, safeguarding that now comes with any of this. It's not simple to run anything anymore. There is a shed load of admin and paperwork to do, permissions to run anything. And people simply don't want to do that. So that is probably what's caused Worley, and I know it's what's caused other shows, major problems. But that is not unique to the hobby, and it's not unique to the demographics of the hobby. More importantly, I believe the real hobby is growing massively, but I believe it's growing in a completely different way. It's getting back to model making, not buying models. Metcalf models tell me that they've never been busier. And yet, if you look on the websites, any, there are huge amounts of ready to plant, very expensive resin buildings, massively discounted. Why? Because they're too expensive. And as I said earlier, that I don't care what it costs so long as it's perfect brigade are dying out. Those of us who are model makers are not. So companies like Mod Metcalf are expanding. They are growing. Of course they are, because they're cheap, simple, effective buildings. And that's where the hobby will get back to. As I said earlier, we're gaining subscribers all the time. We have 30,000 subscribers very nearly. The magazines are in decline. Those magazines support the mainstream. I don't care how much it costs so long as it's perfect brigade. And that is dying. But look at the huge numbers of YouTube videos, Instagram pages, social media. Really big, really growing. And that's where the hobby's moving to. As I said at the beginning, it's not dying, it's changing. There are huge discounts at the moment across lots of very expensive model railway items. Um, that's because that's not the way the hobby is going. One of the big changes will be 3D printing. Doug wanted, or I wanted, some container wagons. That is a 3D printed container wagon, including the chassis. The bogies cost, wait for it, £1 each from China. So that wagon has cost me £2. Now, even if, I, even if you factor in the 120 quid the printer cost, with the engage wagons costing 20 to £30 each, if I make 10 wagons, I've saved the cost of the printer. Doug's currently making a whole range of large bogey wagons. That's in Engage. It can be done in double O, but I'll come to the issues with double O in a moment. So to sum up, the hobby is not dying. If you are boring Bob in the Rivet Counters Model Railway Club, yes, your hobby is. For the rest of us who are using social media, who are making models, who are enjoying our model railways, who are interacting in a completely different way, no, it's not. And I think that's a, an, an aspect of COVID. I think COVID saw a big increase in model railways, but it saw a big increase in the new wave. And then that's been followed by the cost of living crisis. People are still wanting to do model railways, but they need to do them simpler, quicker and cheaper. This, it took me 20 years, but it's perfect, isn't going to work. The modern generation are instant gratification generation. You know, all the jokes about millennials. And that's a big element. I am. I've got a very short attention span. I can't focus on a layout that's going to take me 10 years and all my life savings to build. I could throw this layout together in a couple of months, quite happily, on the cheap, it's all secondhand materials, 3D printed loco there. There's a Pico wagon kits running around. They're currently £8 each and they look fine. That's where the hobby's going. And I find it really amusing to see all these channels suddenly saying, we need simplicity, we need a budget range, we need those sort of things. Guys, we're here, Budget Model Railways, we've been doing it for years. You're catching up. It's all about time, cost, space. Um, and all the manufacturers will have to decide to look for budget ranges. It can be done. Cato. £42 for one of the best running engage locos and two wagons. Uh, Pico, the German company, P-I-K-O, £60 
for a Bobo HO Bobo diesel, all wheel drive, all wheel pickup, directional lights. There is no reason for the Hornby basic model to be over a hundred pound. No reason at all. And if the hobby wants to get back, the mainstream hobby, it's going to have to look at pricing. It's that simple. It's going to have to look at going away from the hobby. The advice given, even now to people starting the hobby, is first decide what era and what location you're going to model. Then you can't make it smaller than six foot by four foot in double O. Oh, and don't forget, you can't get the points to transfer power. You'll need DBTD switches and all this. And it's all rubbish. Buy a loco you like, not too big. Build a layout, run some trains. Yeah, simple as that. No, you don't need all those switches. Pico points in particular, but most points will switch the power for you. I've never built a 6x4 exhibition layout in double O. They've all been smaller than that. Um, this layout is smaller than first radius N. OK, it's only 12 inch radius, but I can get locos around it. I 3D print. I buy kits. That's where the hobby's going. And there's thousands of us out there. It is nothing to do with the hobby dying. What is a major problem is double O. This country went down the double O route for all sorts of reasons that I know. So please don't bother commenting. I know why. The reality is it means we've gone down a rabbit hole. In Japan, uh, thank you to a guy at Kerno who gave me these figures. In the UK, the model railway enthusiast is reckoned to be around a million people. In Japan, it's 10 million. Why? Because their hobby is Engage. It fits the house. It's quick and easy to do. It's cheap. Even a new Kato Bobo diesel is £75. The cheapest equivalent UK outline at discount is 100 its actual price is 130 more than double and it doesn't do anything better than the Cato one Cato can do it because it's a bigger market in my view Hornby missed a trick with TT I get all the reasons why they did it and I'm not going to go into those now I understand why they did it but imagine if they'd done a budget engage range that would have transformed everything. N gives you the space. If they'd done it cheaper, it would have solved the budget reason. So from my perspective, double O is the problem, but we're stuck with it. So somebody's got to find a way of making the double O market bigger. Apparently, one of the fringe benefits of TT is that Hornby have found increased sales of Arnold, uh, not Arnold, but other TT ranges that they do because people in Europe are now buying it because they can run it. We need effectively to either find a way of making double O cheap or accept that TT engage is the way to go. In my view, it's engage. Put simply, you can do a budget model range. Pico, Cato, do it. It can be done. And if the mainstream British hobby wants to survive, it's going to have to do it. In the meantime, actually, the hobby is absolutely thumping. Don't read Railway Modeler. Don't read British Railway Modeler. Go and look at Instagram. Go and look at YouTube. Go and look at the modern social media. What we have here is an older generation saying what young people do and don't want without looking at those things. I see this all the time. In my organisation, the head, the top people keep saying, what do the kids want? But they never ask the kids. The reality is there's loads of kids coming into model railways. Look at East Grinstead Model Railway Club with their youth section. Look at something who run children's layouts at their shows. There are plenty of people bringing kids in, but those kids are not buying high end collectors locos, £300 each, £250 each. They are not reading the magazines. They are buying cheap locos. They are buying secondhand locos. They are putting it on Instagram and so on. So, yes, there is a growth market. There are younger people coming into model railways. And it isn't just about kids. Some of it is about people in their 20s or their 30s or their 40s. They are coming into the hobby. They're just not visible. They're not visible to the mainstream. And they're not buying high end, perfect, low cost rolling stock and buildings. And that is why the headlines... Put my card up. Make it look like 
Oh, it must be a problem because happens. The biggest retailer has gone. Wally has gone. Yeah, Wally's gone because like anybody trying to get volunteers, we can't get them. Hattons have gone for all sorts of reasons. But the reality is that the, the trade is based on limited run, limited edition, high end models. And as we have been saying for years and years, that is not sustainable. If the hobby wants to grow, it's got to find a better genuine budget. And that doesn't mean a Hornby 040 loco at £60 that should be 30 It means bringing these things down to a decent price. And it make, means making them good, reliable locomotives and rolling stock at a cheaper price. Metcalf will continue to do extremely well because they produced a product that people want. It's really simple, guys, in the mainstream. You're not producing what people want. You're not approaching them in the right way. There's an interesting story Metcalf told me. When they brought their castle range out, just about all the main players in the hobby laughed and told them that it was a big, big mistake. Got nothing to do with model railways. The castle range is now Metcalf's best-selling range in double O and N. I'm not surprised. I put the castle on my layout. Absolutely love it. I'd make the whole thing. I'm trying to find somewhere I can put the whole castle because it's so impressive. So the, the hobby has got to get away from this narrow little snodgrass in 1962. Fine. If you don't, it doesn't matter because the rest of us will carry on doing freelance layouts, 3D printing, social media. You know, a shout out to M down in Dorset with her wonderful pink and purple layout. I think that is the most wonderful thing. It's, it's a layout. I haven't got any pictures. Uh, uh, I'll try and get a link for you. But she's built a layout with her dad. Everything's pink and purple. That's fabulous. That's the way the hobby's going. Not recreating Great Western Railway. And it most categorically is not dying. It is growing, but it's subversive. It's underground. It's modern. It's out there in social media. It's 3D printing. It's buying what's cheap. It's making smaller layouts like this one. That's where the hobby is. And it will continue to grow quietly and unseen. Yes, will other retailers go? Yes, they most certainly will. Will other manufacturers continue to struggle and lose money? Yes, they most certainly will. So you will see what appears to be the hobby continuing to decline. But it's the old guard. It's Boring Bob and the Rivet Counters Model Railway Club. It is not the modern hobby, 3D printing, social media. That's my view. I'm sure lots of you are going to disagree, but I've been proved right so far. We started saying five or six years ago that the hobby was too expensive and it needed budget. And all of a sudden, everybody's saying the same thing. We've been saying for years that the rivet counters have got it wrong. And all of a sudden, everybody's agreeing with us. So before you rant in and tell me I'm wrong, please bear in mind I've been right so far. The hobby will continue to grow, but in different ways. Hope you've enjoyed the rant. I'm sure we'll get some views and I'm sure we'll get some comments. I look forward to seeing them. And thank you as always for watching.